Hey everybody, welcome to another video here on the 67 Stain Channel. So today we're going to actually get started on, hopefully, maybe complete, uh, the installation of those decoded digital gauges. So stay tuned and we'll get started. Okay, everybody, as I said, we're going to get started on finally getting these Dakota digital gauges installed. I know I've had them for a long time. Sorry I haven't installed them sooner, uh, but honestly, I've just enjoyed driving the car, getting out and taking it down the road. Uh, it's just so much fun, right? Anybody that's had one of these old cars knows that, you know, driving them is not like driving a, a modern car like my F-150 or my wife's 2016 Mustang. You know, it, it's a very different feel, uh, very fun, and it's just been uh, a lot of, as I call it, Mustang therapy. So, but I'm ready to get started on this now. But before I do, I, I did want to pass along some, some sad news. Um, this past Friday, let me back up. Some of y'all may remember in past videos seeing the orange and white kitty that, I, that we call Socos. Um, he would come in, he was an indoor-outdoor cat, very sweet to everybody. We've had him for 10 or 11 years. Uh, he was a feral kitten that was born under my mother-in-law's house that we were able to catch. He was the only one of that litter we could catch. And as far as I know, the only one that survived. Uh, but he became our, our cat. He uh, was very much part of the family. He, he loved our dogs. His best friend was our dog, Cooper. They would, you know, when, when Soz was indoors, they would sleep together. He, they would groom each other. They were just the, the bestest of buds, um, and he, you know, he, he actually seemed to associate more with being a dog than a cat. Well, this past Friday uh, morning was a very rough one. Um, as I got up to go get some coffee from my office, I looked out to the front yard because I heard some noises, and I saw two, two dogs um, attacking him, uh, basically using him as a chew toy in a tug-of-war rope. Um, I went running as fast as I can to get to him. They, the dogs dropped, dropped him, dropped so close, and came running up to me with tails wagging, wanting to be patted. Uh, so they were, I, they were very sweet dogs. I think they were a pit bull mix. Um, not that that's anything. I, I have nothing against pit bulls. I, I know that they are very misunderstood in many cases, but not. But uh, these dogs ran loose and attacked Soz in his own yard, uh, and sadly he, he didn't make it. So uh, a little bit heartbroken about that. Uh, we've lost many animals in the past, uh, but those have all been due to some sort of illness or just old age. So to lose one this brutally is, is a bit rough. Um, so sadly we won't be seeing Soko's on the channel anymore. So anyway. Um, I just had to share that with y'all uh, because he had been in several videos walking through here. He was kind of our, our garage kitty. But anyway, with that, let's get over here. Uh, I pulled the gauges down uh, from the box where I had them sit in. So I want to go through, look at what's in there. So again, I can remind myself the steps we've got to go through and what all the pieces and components are we've got to put together. So we'll come over here and start doing that. Okay, so we got the box pulled down, like I said, right here, silky uh, screws and wiring, some sensors, and the control module with another set of wiring and, and looks like another sensor. If I remember correctly, I'll pull the instructions out here in a moment, there is a temperature sensor, an oil pressure sensor, and then there's also a speedo sensor cable that goes with this um, that replaces the mechanical uh, you know, stickers uh, in here. So let's see what we got in here we to do installation instructions. Okay, okay, what's that? None of that talks about the there speedometer sensor. And the fuel instruct more 
set up instructions. Okay, so yeah, so we got a oil pressure sensor, a temperature sensor, a speedo sensor that has to be all wired in. So I have to wire those in. Shouldn't be a big deal. I mean, we already have those sensors in there, the stock ones, so that, I mean, should replace those in there. Okay, so that's the instructions there. And then, of course, y'all saw in the unboxing, we got the individual gauges under here. So let's go in and figure out what we need to do next to part of the setup now that we know kind of what we got to install it's like a mail truck it's sunday why is there a mail truck running on sunday it's labor day weekend by the way let's put this aside and then we'll talk about what we got to do next okay so you obviously have to remove the instrument the existing instrument cluster uh, here so to pull this whole bezel out. It's not that hard. There's three screws across the top one there One in the middle and then one far over there. Then there's two screws down Under each one of these main pods here down at the bottom right there uh, Those actually act as part of the ground and then of course you've got this one screw sitting right there Then that generally comes out now. I've done this several times already as you're lowering or pulling that out, you the first thing you've got to do uh, to get far enough out to do everything else is you've got to undo the speedo cable. Now, in my car, and I'm not sure if this is true of others, I know I had a 66 Mustang and it was that way, but that there's not a lot of, of play in that speedo cable. So you actually, I found I have to pull the temperature controls out as well so that's got two screws across the top and then there's two down at the the bottom as well that have to come out and then that slides out and then you reach in there and undo that speedo cable hopefully yours isn't so tight that you got to get a wrench or something there that can be problematic once you get the speed uh, speedometer cable loose you can pull this out far enough to unhook the blinker i'm sorry wiper uh, switch connections and then the uh, various connections on the back of your instrument cluster. Now, my connections aren't going to be quite the same as a stock because I have that American Auto Wire harness that I installed a while back. So my connections are going to be a little bit different than that. But once you get this out, you can disconnect the, the wires and then this cluster will just come out. Pretty straightforward, not hard to do. Um, I'm not really going to show that to you. I may do it in some time lapse type thing, but just wanted to go through that. So once we get that out, then we're going to want to uh, do the sensor. So let's go take a look at those sensors. The other thing is uh, make sure you disconnect your your battery, right? Because <clears throat> you're playing with electronic or electrical stuff here. So disconnect that so you don't drain your battery and you don't short something out. So. Let's go look under the hood with those sensors I was talking about are for the uh, temperature and oil pressure. Okay, so up under here you've got the temperature sensor and the oil pressure sensor. The temperature sensor is right here. This is not the stock location. The stock location is actually back on the back side of the block uh, over there. I've got the Holly sensor for this EFI there. So put the temperature sensor for the gauges up here. Um, keeping in mind that I'm not sure how accurate this is going to be to start with because it doesn't start getting... Uh, flow through there until the thermostat opens, but I don't know of any other good place to, to put it And I need the holly to have a good sense of the temperature So we'll leave it back there um, Now right here you can see that cylinder right there. That's the oil pressure sending unit that goes to the stock gauge now 
because my gauges weren't working, I installed a, a separate under the hood gauge. You can see it right there, the, the black one. Uh, there so I could at least have some sense of what the oil pressure was because my gauge wasn't working. So I'll just replace the stock sending unit with the one that comes with the Dakota digital gauges there. So that's going to be, you know, this stuff up here is going to be fairly simple. Um, because this is where it is, if I unscrew that, uh, I shouldn't lose a lot of coolant. May some, I don't know. I will obviously put a trip pan under there. And then where that uh, is, because the, the engine's not running the oil pressure, there should be no oil that comes out of there because there's no pressure on it. So that should be fine to come out, should be fairly easy peasy to, to do. The next part is gonna be down at the transmission. And keep in mind, I'm gonna be showing you with a C4 transmission. This is an automatic transmission. I don't know how this would work in a three-speed or a four-speed. Um, obviously with the inline six, I don't think you'd have a four speed, you might have a three speed though. So let's get down and show where the speedo cable connects in and what we got to do there. Okie dokie. So right there, you can see that's where the speedo cable goes into the back of the transmission. Uh, you can see if you fall it back, there's the drive shaft connecting in there. And then it goes up into the transmission mount on the back and then into the rest of the transmission. So there's a gear in there that's got to come out. Uh, and this whole cable has got to come out. Now the way this works is it, the gear spins a uh, shaft that's connected to a, a cable inside this housing or this tube here uh, that goes up. And follow it up. Um, if you see it, it's hard to see. Anyway, up and that runs back up in through the firewall and then up back to the back of the speedometer. And as that gear rotates, it rotates the cable, which then rotates the speedometer and indicates the speed. So this is now going to be changed to an electrical um, type uh, connection. In there so we'll have to replace that whole cable going up so that, that's going to be fun to figure that one out and how that connects so we'll have to to do that too and it looks like there's a leak back there so maybe this is a good time to put it in and it won't leak anymore because it looks like it's leaking from there and i didn't notice that until now so very very good so that's going to require us to jack the get the car jacked up to do that change um, that will leak, by the way. You will get transmission fluid out of there, so be aware of that. Looking back there, it looks like my seal is good. Um, what I want to do while I'm here. Okay, good. That U joint I was worried about. It seems like it's okay. Anyway, um, so now let's go ahead and start pulling things out and changing things out. I'm going to start by pulling the instrument cluster out of the car. Well, first I'm going to start by disconnecting the battery. Then I'll pull the instrument cluster out of the car. Okay, so you can see we got the instrument cluster out. I did have one little snafu. The screw that goes up in here um, was messed up. It got stuck and hung up in the bezel. And you can see, let's see, I kind of got that buggered up trying to get it out. I want to thank my good friend and colleague uh, Tim Gaunt for coming over and helping to get that out of there. It was not easy, but we got it out. Uh, the one thing I did want to mention that I forgot when showing you all the screws, there is a, uh, well, a screw on the bezel here that's got a, a nut on the back of it. Uh, it goes into here and so the, through there. So the easiest way, if you have one, to get that out uh, pull the radio bezel out here. Uh, you can't get through it through here because there's a solid plate, uh, just solid metal back there. Uh, so you pull this out and then you can get to it. I don't didn't have a nut on there. It was loose, so I didn't have to deal with that. But um, yeah. So anyway, instrument cluster is out. Now to go pull the gauges off, put the new gauges on to here. So we'll go do that now. 
Okay, folks, you can see I've got the cluster out of the car and inside because it's cooler inside. So the first step, once this is out, is to remove the old um, casing, I guess, that can, has the gauges in it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Let's see one of the lights came out. For, I'm not sure what that's for. Anyway, so this is simple. It's just a series of Phillips head screws located around the, the bezel. I should mention, if I haven't already, that the uh, Dakota gauges uh, will fit the stock bezel for, uh, in this case, the 67, 68 Mustang, uh, but it does not include the bezel. So now if you've got one that's in rough shape, now would be a good time to replace that if you want to. So I'm going to go through and go ahead and take this off. Um, probably will fast forward through this part because, you know, it's just taking out screws. So. Now check the instructions. Okay. You also take off the lenses. Lenses were kind of rough. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finish doing the rest of this, get it down to ready to uh, install the gauges on here, uh, and I'll come come back. No point in watch, you sitting and watching me take out screws. You know how to take out screws. Okay, guys, so I've got the several of the gauges from Dakota Digital already installed in the bezel. Um, they're pretty easy. They come with these long two inch screws and they have these little bitty star lock washers whatever you want to call them that are used to connect each one of these and these just screw right into the, the stock bezel pretty straightforward a couple of things i want to point out one i if i had them i would do this but i would probably get a couple or get some slightly bigger washers cover more area to get it I don't know, tied down. These seem, they're almost as big as the head and they kind of squish in some of the holes. Uh, so what you'll find with these is that, so at the big gauges here, the slots or the holes that you'll screw these into are elongated. So that gives you the ability to clock uh, or adjust the gauge to get it straight in the bezel a little bit. So you don't want to tighten these all the way down you get them in there good, then check the alignment, you know, clock it left or right as you need to, and then tighten those down where you're happy with the gauge looks in the cluster. On the smaller gauges, the thing I found out here is, hopefully you can see, hopefully I'm getting this on there, is you've got two holes on each side. One's a straight hole and one's an elongated hole. If you look down here on the bezel, with the original lenses and stuff, you had a stud here next to these two screw holes. Uh, and, and this helped align the old uh, bezel 
or I should say the old lenses and the gauge and mounting it. So you would think that this would be the same, that those two straight pins would align with this and then the elongated holes would put in the screws and you could adjust accordingly. What I found with the, uh, I'm about to put in the oil pressure gauge here, but with the, the fuel gauge, which is, what is the fuel, fuel, fuel gauge over here, the temp gauge over here, is that actually you put the screw in the one of the straight holes on one side and one of the elongated holes on the other. So what that allows is you pivot on that straight hole, right, to align the gauge in the bezel in that elongated hole allows for that uh, adjustment on either side. So hopefully, uh, hopefully you see that. I can't see the camera, but um, you get some idea. They give you some adjustment here. Now the middle one I'm looking at, and it might be the same. It might be different. We're going to to find out quickly. This looks like it's going to be all the elongated holes. So I hear somebody pulling up in the garage. It's Labor Day, so people are off from work. And whoops. Already had a washer on there. I want to put two. So we're going to get this going. By the way, I reassembled my old gauge cluster in got a hair down in there. In my old bezel that I had. And I say it's old. It wasn't original. The car is actually one I replaced in the 80s. Yeah, this is going to line up. The center one is lining up on the two elongated ones. So that's interesting. I, I guess this is all because of the different cars this can theoretically fit um, and how their different, you know, gauge clusters are, are put together. So anyway, I'm going to get this screwed in. But yeah, this is on the elongated side. On both of those, so you can see this has got some adjustment in it. So I'm going to get this screwed down and we'll see what goes next, which is somehow all this stuff has got to connect together. So we'll figure that out. Okay, so guys, I got it all the gauges screwed in and down. I think they look, they look really, really good. Um, I'll take a picture of the two, the original gauges next to these gauges, uh, so you can kind of compare them. I'm at a stopping point now for a couple of reasons. One, there's supposed to be a plastic plate that kind of covers this null space between the gauges so you don't get light through places you're not supposed to. Um, I can't find it anywhere. I went back and re-watched the unboxing video I did when I first got these and it wasn't there. So I've sent messages to both CJ where I originally bought it and Dakota Digital. It's Labor Day, they're not answering, so um, I'm gonna hold there. The other thing I did wanna mention is that when screwing these things down, uh, you know, get, remember you're screwing into plastic, there's no need to grill these things down. You'll end up splitting the um, bezel up and you don't wanna do that. Uh, so that, guys, I'm gonna leave it here. Next video, we'll get into doing the actual install of the sensors, running the wires, setting up the control box, uh, those kind of things. But like I said, I can't really kind of do anything until I get this stuff done. And it's hot outside, and I really don't want to go work outside. So with that, guys, hope you liked the video. Make sure to give it a thumbs up if you did, and I will see you all next time.